Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA front office show. We had a great day yesterday. Not only did Pascal Siakam get traded, that big move go down, but also we hit 30,000 subscribers over on the YouTube channel. We did it. We, we made it there. Keith, that's a, uh, a milestone for us. So thank you to everybody out there who subscribes to the front office show YouTube channel. We appreciate all of you for helping us get there. Yeah, absolutely. Could, couldn't could uh, thank you guys enough for that. Also, to everybody who tuned in live yesterday yeah. and watched after the fact uh, as we broke down the Pascal Siakam trade, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup on that trade because as it is when you react live, details will come out a little later as the deals go official. And it was two trades officially. They were both done uh, last night, one before game started, one after uh, game started. So we'll get into those. But also, we're at like 1,300 likes on that video, and that's huge too because that helps yeah. people find the show. So if you can uh, continue to subscribe, and uh, if you are subscribed, like the videos and that, we just appreciate it so much. It, it really helps us out quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been, a, been a, a great help, all of you out there that have been following the show. A lot of people saying, oh, you guys are uh, you guys are my go-to over ESPN and stuff like that. Well, don't keep us a secret. Make sure you tell people about us, help us get out there and, uh, and all of that. This is our time of year. So we certainly want to get in front of as many people as we possibly can and show them what yep. the front office show is all about. Um, uh, Keith, I guess the place to really start off though, is that Pascal Siakam trade fallout. So let's go there first. Uh, Pascal Siakam traded obviously to the Indiana Pacers. Now, I know yesterday live we were talking about some of the players that needed to be waived and, and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm assuming officially that's all gone through at this point yep. now, right? I know you see all that. Yeah, everything is done now. These two trades are completed. There's guy like the Pacers tweeted out a little bit that Pascal Siakam has landed in Indiana, which presumably mm -hmm. that's the, the to do his physical. As long as nothing pops up in that or the guys on the Toronto side, everything will be complete on this. So what ended up happening with this is it ended up being two trades. Now, as far as anybody's functionally concerned, it's a three-team trade. Nothing really changes, mm -hmm. but just it's kind of fun to get into cap-wise and CBA mechanics with this. So what happened, uh, the initial trade was the Indiana Pacers acquired Kyra Lewis Jr. from the New Orleans Pelicans. They sent the minimal cash that they could in return for Lewis, which was $110,000, and they got a second-round pick. So if you really think about it, the Pacers kind of bought a second-round pick for $110,000. That's pretty really good. what happened here because they're not even the ones eating Lewis's salary because he's being moved on. Pelican side of that trade, extremely easy to understand. This, this got them out of luxury tax. They went from about – 2.9 over to about 2.7 or so under. Mm -hmm. So that's why they did this. They wanted to get out of the luxury tax. They in the Charlotte Hornets are so the only two franchises that have never paid the tax in their history. And this was not going to be the first year for the Pelicans. So they're out of the tax. Indiana had to waive James Johnson to do this trade because they were at a max uh, roster spots. They were at 15 players on standard contracts. So they bring Lewis in. Then Lewis. Because they acquired him with cap space, because they were an under the cap team, they mm -hmm. could immediately turn around and aggregate him in trade. So what they did was they put him with Bruce Brown and with uh, Jordan Nuora, and those three players were traded for Pascal Siakam. Uh, the Pacers also gave up. Now we know the pick details as well. Their 2024 first round pick unprotected. The pick that is the worst of the... Uh, LA Clippers, Oklahoma City Thunder, Houston Rockets, and I'm missing somebody. Who's the other one? Utah Jazz. Uh, mm -hmm. th those uh, four teams in 2024. And then the 2026 pick they're sending to the Raptors, that's actually top four protected. So it's uh, uh, if the, everything falls apart on the Pacers and they have great lottery luck and move in to the top four, they're protected there. That carries over. I think it was for two years. And then, then that turns in a second round pick. So that's what the, the Raptors get the Raptors side of this, just to clean up their side. They bring in Brown, Lewis and Nawara. They mm -hmm. chose to bring Nawara into the 
uh, Precious Achua trade exception that they had from the previous OG and Anobi trade with the Knicks. And then that allowed them to create a, a trade exception of about $10.2 million for Pascal Siakam because now they're only technically bringing in Bruce Brown and Kyra Lewis uh, to match salary on him. So kind of fun cap mechanics there with everything with that, but that should clean everything up um, where all this landed out with this trade. Yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of moving parts there, and of course everybody's going to focus on Siakam to Indiana. But good to have everything, all the ducks in the row. Now, let me ask you this, because it's something I've been thinking about with this trade. The Pacers get Pascal Siakam. Obviously, the assumption is that he's going to stay in Indiana. Sure. How do you feel about this trade? Is I think we're we, we in general have been fairly favorable towards the Pacers in this deal. If the result of this is this summer. Pascal gets a true full blown max everything he can get maximum number of years contract from the Pacers this summer. Does that change how you feel about the trade? Not really. I, I don't think I it, it might a little bit because that would be right now that projects to be a five year two hundred and forty seven million dollar right. contract uh, from the uh, from the Pacers. I just should note too because this came up. He is no longer eligible for the so-called Supermax or 35%. You can only get that from the team that drafts you or if you're acquired while you're still on your rookie contract. Right. So he's no longer eligible for that. So he would be a 30% max guy. Yeah, if they gave him that, I'd feel probably a little less good about it because that seems right. like a bit overpay. But it, I think it's probably going to come in somewhere in the range of 180 to 190 million. Over, I'm going to guess probably four years. Maybe he gets like five years, 200 million. I'm okay with that if that that's where it goes. Somewhere in the range of 40 plus million a year for Pascal Siakam, 40, 45 million. That seems about fair to me. Yeah, and that would be for the remainder. Assuming it's, if it's a five-year deal, that's probably for the remainder of his prime. That'll take him through what age thirty-four. So, yeah, uh, that's you know that you're going to get some good production there out of Pascal Siakam over the course of that. The, you know, just just something that's interesting. He was wanting a certain amount of money from the Raptors. Suddenly, he's okay with being a Pacer. Got me thinking. I wonder if the money had anything to do. If the Pacers said, "Hey, that's we'll true. give you that that full max." Um, but you know, I guess the the jumping off point from here then is Bruce let's Brown. go into one. Sorry, just one last thing, if we can, yeah, on yeah. this trade. Absolutely, just because people are always like, "Well, when are they going to play?" Um, oh yeah, <laughs> none of the guys the Raptors got were on their injury report. They released an updated injury report today. They're on a back to back tonight. Does not mean Bruce Brown, Jordan Awar, or Kyra Lewis will play. We don't even know where they are technically like like physically are in terms of uh, right. meeting up with the raptors but they weren't on the injury report so maybe they, they, they'll play siakam we know he was in indiana at some point earlier today because the pacers tweeted about that the team is out on the west coast he is not going to play tonight uh so they won't have him tonight but they play tomorrow so maybe tomorrow uh, yeah. we, we could could see him, him play. What would be be my guess is that that's the earliest. Maybe he can meet the team and play. The other good news, it's not really related to trade, but it's Pacers somewhat news. Tyrese Halliburton says he's going to be back sooner than anybody thought. So probably uh, by the end of the weekend, it sounds like maybe for Halliburton. Now, maybe the team's like, well, hold on there, buddy. Like, yeah. <laughs> let's not let's get too, the bricks. too far right. ahead of ourselves. But it sounds like he, he's feeling pretty good and is much closer to returning after what looked like it could have been a really scary injury. So I think we're going to get full strength pacers here, very, uh, but or a lot sooner than anticipated. I'm excited to see that. I can't wait to see what the Pacers look like once they add Pascal Siakam to the fold. You know, one thing to note, too, is there's weather issues going on all over the country. I don't know if you saw last night, Everybody. but DeAndre Ayton had to sit out again, uh, his game for the Blazers because he could not get out of his house due to yeah. ice. I, uh, how? Like, I, I, I just don't understand that. Like, I understand maybe he couldn't get there, but they said they sent people from the team to try to collect him. Does that mean now they're all stuck? at his house or i guess there was some thought they couldn't actually get to him but like he couldn't yeah, I, uh, walk up the road I, I don't know like i would have to imagine that he couldn't them. get they couldn't actually get to him yeah. um if the roads are frozen the roads are frozen and if sure. you're if you're snowed in then that's and i think it's an ice issue in portland again i'm yeah, not in portland so i don't know yeah, exactly 
but uh, ice can be very very tricky to try to drive on and all that but uh, but then again it begs the question why could the other blazers yeah get I, there yeah something just was weird on, on that whole thing like I, yeah there was years ago there was a uh, patriots player um who he missed he was late coming getting to to the stadium and bill mm -hmm. belichick sat him and didn't play him in a game and when they were like what like he was stuck because of the snowstorm and he's like it's on him to know him be somewhere and he then right then it came out later that like half the team had stayed in a hotel that's very close to the stadium where they would oh. definitely be assured of getting there. And it was kind of like, Hey, you didn't do what you had to do. Now I'm not saying Aiden should have slept at the arena or anything, but like, like I don't Baker know. Mayfield. Weird. He else made it and he didn't, I don't know. Something, something doesn't sit right with me on that one, but yes, to the bigger point, weather is a mess everywhere in the country. So good luck with some of these kids. I mean, it feels like every night we're getting report. This team got in at you know two thirty in the afternoon, and they got to play tonight, and all sorts right. of crazy stuff. So, yep, weather's hitting the country hard right now. Yeah. Um, all right, so Bruce Brown, does he even stay with the Toronto Raptors? Uh, rumor out there that the Knicks are interested in him. Now, the 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 uh, Raptors can flip him; they just can't attach anyone else to him if they decide to send him somewhere else. Uh, what would a deal with the Knicks potentially look like? My guess is that Evan Fournier the is Fournier the main deal. chunk of matching salary. Maybe they they send a pick or two to to the Knicks where that turns into. This could be one of those where we've talked about the Knicks have a couple picks that are their first round picks, but they're not great because they're like mm -hmm. very heavily protected Wizards picks and Pistons picks and those kinds of things. So maybe what we could see happen there is those picks are the kind of ones that go because if you're the Raptors. It's not like you. It's not like Bruce Brown is not Pascal Siakam. You mm. did not have him for years and years and years, and he's an All Star, All NBA level guy. You might look at it and say, "Yeah, if we can get a couple bites at the apple, maybe with picks that could turn into something." Sure, why not? And we'll we'll do that. So, and it wouldn't impact their cap uh, picture at all because Fournier is also on a team option next year. So, so we'll see if that's how it goes with with the Knicks. Kind of have my doubts. Bruce Brown is a Raptor in three weeks at the trade deadline. I think. I think he's going to get moved along. And does he play for Toronto? Like, does he so. actually get onto the floor and put on a, a Raptors jersey? I do think he'll play because I think they're going to – it'd be weird for him to just sit for three weeks unless there's a trade that happens within the next couple of days. Yeah. But I do think he'll play. But it's going to be I, – I don't know if it'll be quite the Rashid, Hollis, ha, Rashid Wallace Hawks tenure – uh, one game. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. I, I, it was it was one epic run. game, but still. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it'll be a long run uh, for Bruce Brown with, with the Raptors, but we'll see because he fits a lot of places. And twenty two million mm -hmm. is not such a big contract that it's super hard to acquire. Like a team should right. be able to get to that number if they really want him with relative ease. Yeah, you've got uh, Rasheed Wallace, and then uh, Carmelo Anthony was a hawk. Yes. Didn't name all. I don't think he he didn't actually play a game for them. Yeah, so. no, because he got moved on to the Thunder uh, right. pretty quickly. So if you want a Raptors Bruce Brown jersey for some you reason, better you better strike fast <laughs> and, and get that one. Um, all right. Oh, I don't uh, think we talked about it. The Raptors had to waive somebody too. Christian Coloco oh, okay. waived by the Raptors, and that was a little bit of a surprise. He, in some respects, because he is a guy who played a lot for them as a rookie last year. He was a second round pick, big center. Uh, really looked pretty good for what he was. He's pretty raw, so he's got a long ways to go. But he's been dealing with an upper respiratory infection since the very beginning of training camp. So he is still not back. Uh, by all reports, I talked to a couple people. It's been nothing to do with this trade or thought, but it was actually earlier in the day yesterday about, hey, where is he at? And they were like, still not running. He's pretty much kind of just standstill shooting off to the side. By himself wow. he's in good spirits and seems to be doing okay but still not there so the initial thought was maybe a veteran like garrett temple gets waived and that's how they open the roster spot. but they ended up waving coloco eating the rest of his salary he's not guaranteed for next year so no money on the books moving forward but kind of an interesting waiver where i think had had you not had the health concerns i don't think he's the player who would have gotten waived hmm. Well, all right. So that's somebody to, I guess, to keep an eye on here uh, and see if he can get back to 100. percent Then maybe find his way back onto a roster. Um, let's jump over here. My my Lakers, uh, according to Dave McMenamin of ESPN, looking at Tyus Jones and Colin Sexton. 
I, I do wonder how much of this is, and I don't know what the, this could not bode well for their discussions with DeJounte Murray. This could also be a, hey, Atlanta, we have other options we're looking at. Uh, what do you think about these two guys as as targets potentially for the Lakers? I think that makes some sense for, for, for the Lakers, for sure. Jones is much more of a true point guard. He's kind of the sure. old school point guard, if, if we think of it that way. He's having a great year in Washington, and this is the difference. Oddly enough, he's paired in this report with Colin Sexton. And oddly enough, we beat down the doors, what, like two years ago. Colin Sexton's not just putting up empty stats because his yep. efficiency is good. Tyus Jones is in that same boat. His efficiency is really good. He's shooting like 50-something percent from, from the, the field. field. Yep. And over 40% from three. He's a career high in points, career high in assists, because mostly because he's starting uh, yeah. for the first time fully. His other starting experience of note was when John Morant was out in Memphis. So could definitely come in. He's an expiring guy, so you got to have some – conversations about our what's our plan long term or let's say you flop or flip d'angelo russell for him then mm -hmm. do you do with jones kind of what you did with russell this off season where it's we're going to resign you but shorter contract and mm -hmm. you just kind of keep moving the asset who knows how that could go down um colin sexton much more of a score but again strong play he's starting for the jazz i don't know about that one because i don't know what the lakers would send the jazz that makes a lot of sense for Utah right now. That sure. I just find that match to be a little harder to come up with Jones much easier because Washington would say, Hey, give us a couple picks and off we go. And it's right. right doesn't even need necessary need to be first round picks. You send matching salary and a draft pick and off where we, we go and we're out of here with that. So I like both guys. If the Lakers went that direction though, I think, I think they could both help for sure. I, I do like both players. Um, I don't know. Like if, because what I have heard out there is that it, it D'Angelo Russell is the guy the Lakers are looking to move. I don't see that as a particular upgrade for the Lakers with either player moving D'Lo to get Tyus Jones or Colin Sexton. Both guys are fine, but I don't think that's a clear like needle mover for the team. Um, but mm -hmm. if this is something where you're not convinced Gabe Vincent's going to be 100% at some point this season, could you go get Tyus Jones to fill that role that Gabe Vincent was initially going to be in? Maybe that's that's something that you look to do. Colin Sexton happened to light up the Lakers uh, about a week ago. The Lakers have a history. <laughs> a lot of teams do this. Uh, yeah, it's, it, the guy plays well against the team. Suddenly they're like, hey, let, let, let's get that guy. Um, that was a Doc Rivers' favorite for years. It yes. was like, oh, this guy be, beat us up. Let's let's go trade for him instead. Right. So it doesn't keep happening. Exactly, exactly. My so, issue with Tyus Jones is a lot of his value, I think, is muted with the Lakers. Because LeBron's going to have the ball a lot. Sure. There's other guys like Austin Reeves. You're going to make sure you play some through AD. He's shooting great, but he's just – his value comes in, hey, let me really run the offense. Let me get get us into stuff. Let me be the guy. And on the nights when LeBron is out or LeBron is off his game or AD isn't hitting or Austin Reeves, at least with D'Angelo Russell or Colin Sexton, I think that's probably a – more of a sideways kind of move. I think they're fairly mm. similar-ish type players. Sure. I, I think those guys, the value with one, either one of them is, hey, they can fill it up. They can go get you 25 or 30 points if you need to on those kind of nights and maybe keep you in a game otherwise. So, yeah, Sexton, I don't know what the match would be that makes sense for Utah. I don't know that he's an upgrade very much, if at all. You kind of lock into longer-term money, too, because he's got a couple mm -hmm. years left, so that's the thing. Jones, I if, if you're transitioning to, like you said, we need one more real point guard on this team, all right, maybe Jones makes some sense. But I think what you said at the very beginning, this is probably part of that posturing of, well, hey, we got other options, so let's, you know, if we're not going to get a deal done for DeJounte Murray or for – I'm just saying Zach Levine, if the, you know, if there was any traction to those conversations, Hey, we got other options. So we don't have to go this way. That becomes uh, part of what happens at this time, at time of year too. Yeah. Last, last I heard, the last thing I heard from the Lakers side of things was we don't want to wait forever in regards yeah. to a DeJounte Murray thing. So yeah. that's, I think that's there's value point. this year to being an early mover. Like, yeah. like the Pacers were with Siakam. There's nothing holding up 
most guys from being traded now. Uh, most guys that can be traded can be traded today. There's like a couple more minor restrictions that are going to lift, but they're all lifting within the next two weeks anyway ahead of the deadline. So if you can move now, because what you get then is maybe you get them for a little bit cheaper because you don't have another desperate team in there driving up the price, and you also get the benefit of having the player on the court and mm-hmm. helping you know, in theory, you're acquiring them because they're going to help you. Well, if you can get them now today, that's an extra, what, 10 games you might get out of them. And as yeah. opposed to waiting. That, that, uh, and that matters a lot. Yeah, big time, especially when you're fighting to for a playoff position or to even get into the playoff picture. Sure? So, yeah, without a doubt. All right. Uh, last thing that we've got here is uh, going back up to Portland, where apparently everything is frozen. Uh, Jeremy Grant is happy. In Portland, despite the he ice. He likes the ice, I guess. He likes the ice. He, uh, he, he plays well in the ice. He is, uh, you know what, Keith, if I had Jeremy Grant's contract, I would be I would be happy in Portland as, as well. Um, you would be pretty icy, too. Icy that, that's out. right. That's, that's cool. right. You'd be all blinged cool. out. Um, <laughs> Jeremy Grant. Oh, no, we lost our way. Um, that was bound to happen. Yeah, it was going to happen sooner or later. Uh, Jeremy Grant happy in, in Portland. And so, look, there are betrayed rumors. Obviously, we talked about, I believe it was yesterday, a uh, bit of a whirlwind, though, uh, sure. where we talked about that. Uh, Jeremy Grant, uh, the the Blazers were not seriously considering offers for him, which was a bit of a surprise to me anyway, that, uh, that they wouldn't look to move on from him. He's going to be 30 in March. Uh, given where that team is at, I figured they would want to move on from him if they could. Obviously, he's a big contract. How many teams out there really want to take on the money that they gave him this past summer? But uh, Jeremy Grant, apparently, from it's not like he's pushing his way out from his side. He's saying, look, if I if I don't get traded, I'm fine here, here in Portland. I'm happy here. Yeah, I think there's a couple things at play. One, I don't think Portland intends this to be a multiple-year, stay-at-the-bottom, rebuild, through sure. high draft picks type of thing. I think this is more of a... Hey, within a couple of years, we're looking to move back up. We, 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 we're going to be down, but we're coming back quickly. Mm-hmm. I think the other piece is there is value to, you can't just be 15 guys who are 22 and under. Yeah, sure. it just it's you can't build any kind of functional team. Somebody has to be there to kind of help guys along their way, show them. And I think if you're Portland, there's probably at least some level of thought to once DeAndre Ayton can get out of his driveway that you've got Ayton, <laughs> Grant, all those guards, and that's the start of something, right? We, we're at a draft pick this year. They're going to be a position to probably get a probably one of the really good forwards. I would say there, there's some pretty good forwards that are starting to mm-hmm. uh, round in shape as being high-end lottery picks here as this draft cycle continues. So I think that's what your hope is. Add a guy like that couple maybe more smart trades with a couple of our other veterans and off we go and we get this thing moving very quickly uh sean hyken actually he he runs a ind- very independent but very well done uh trailblazers uh site which is called the rose garden report he's the one who got the quote from grant after they beat the nets last night where grant basically said i get it like i've been in the league i'm very much paraphrasing but like I've been in the league for a while. I get all the trade rumors and all that, yeah. but I'm happy here. I don't really want to be traded. So I, I don't know that we're just going to see it go immediately to Jeremy Grant uh, gets traded. Now, I think if a team says, hey, how about two first-round picks for Jeremy Grant? Portland's going to drive him to the airport. I, I let's, let's not be silly. If, I just if they can get him there. Yeah, depending sure. on the road. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. As long as they don't have to go by DeAndre Aiden's house. Um, yes. So I think it is a I, I think it's just more of a thing of, hey, we're gonna f- figure all this stuff out and yeah, we'll we'll we we have got time. We're not in any real rush to to do this, so we'll we'll see. And we're obviously having a little bit of fun with DeAndre Aiden's situation. Sure. That's, you know, first and foremost, be safe, be smart. Of course. Don't, don't be silly. I mean, I'm I'm sitting here in Florida saying this, but I did grow up in the Northeast where ice and snow was a thing. But it, I, it can I be it. treacherous. And in Portland, I have saw a lot of people saying like, hey, everybody's kind of laughing at this. Like we we don't get this very right. often. So we're not really set not up prepared for, for to deal with this. And that that is a something that's going on all over the country. There's a lot of places dealing with with mm-hmm. crazy weather. So anybody mm-hmm. watching, yes, hopefully from the safety and warmth of your own home or somewhere stay safe and you know be be smart with all your decisions that you make absolutely um last thing i'll say on the jeremy grant thing i agree with you that yes you need an adult in the room 
I don't think you want to pay a guy $160 million to be the adult in the room, Fair. but th there is benefit to that. And you already gave him the contract and he's a good player and, and all of that certainly matters. So, And I don't um, think that contract turns super sour or anything. I, I think you're okay with that. I'm worried about the age. Turns 30 in March. By the end. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the uh, last couple of years where it gets messy. Yeah. And it's not, that's, it's not so much. I'm worried about the, like I'm worried about the Blazers if they say, well, we're not going to trade you. The, and then they're going to try to trade him this summer. Or they're going to try to trade him next. The longer you push this back, the more of a factor that becomes for sure. opposing teams and the potentially the less of a return you get. So that's my only concern there from the Blazers side. But I agree. I don't think they, they have to move him right now or anything. They're losing plenty as it is. Um, and they're going to be, they're going to try to put themselves in the best position to bounce back from this. So, all right. Well, I think that about does it for today. Um, obviously, lots going on in the NBA trade market. February 8th is the trade deadline. We're going to keep you up to date on everything. So make sure, again, if you're not a subscriber yet, you hit that subscribe button right here to the Front Office Show YouTube channel. Of course, follow us over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts as well. Till next time, everybody. See you and stay safe.